Hey guys, if you're looking for help with your Amazon business in terms of troubleshooting or strategy, visit sellersessions.com forward slash consultancy or drop me a message to danny at sellersessions.com. Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. Uh, I bring in Leo Lemon for the first time. How are you doing, Leo? Hi, um, I'm glad to be on your show. Uh, I've heard a lot about it, but never had a chance to be here. Thanks for inviting. No worries. Do you want to give the audience a little bit of background on yourself? Uh, well, I've been in marketing and software uh, development space for the last 18 years. Uh, I come from, uh, uh, I have a big hosting company in Mexico, and uh, I did a lot of Amazon uh, SEO, etc. And then I moved to Amazon space in uh, about 2015. Uh, I'm a, a seven-figure seller on Amazon, member of MDS Group, Million Dollar Seller Group. And... Um, I started to develop software for ourselves first and then made it uh, public, first for MDS people and then for everybody else. Our first project is uh, Zone Pages, then we did Zone Jump, Zone Words, uh, Rebate Key, Pixelfy. Um, so that's me. Excellent. So you cover quite a lot of ground there because you've got what? Keyword tools, landing page software, rebate service. So you literally done a full sweep of the ecosystem there of the type of softwares to offer. Um, but today, we're going to talk on a more of a technical level. Uh, I heard you on another podcast, like I mentioned before, big shout out to Many Coach. You were, you were on their round table, and I was quite impressed with the stuff that you were covering, and I thought I'd get you on the show as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we kind of chatted off call, but we were talking about uh, AI and a few other bits and pieces. What's your current take on that at the moment in terms of AI? Artificial intelligence. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Amazon is changing very fast. And uh, what we see right now is not what's going to be tomorrow or three months from now or a year from now. So when you launch your products, you need to, uh, you need to look into the future, first of all. And Amazon is testing a lot of algorithms at the same time. And we've seen it in the way reviews are displayed, for example, and the way uh, the rankings are happening. So uh, there is a lot of artificial intelligence. Uh, Amazon is adjusting its algorithm, uh, personalizes them for, uh, for different buyers. So for business buyers, you may see different results. For, uh, they know your interests, uh, so you will see a little bit different results. And they're testing a lot of that. And there are a lot of uh, information and rumors circulating how Amazon uh, treats the buyers and uh, how not all buyers are the same and not uh, uh, equal. So we need to know that when we are launching the products. Gotcha. And in terms of, I mean, I don't know if you have any background or understanding on this. There's been a lot of talk with regards to almost accounts being penalized. You know, like when we're doing the discounts. So... Uh, effectively let's just say you've got account a that constantly every time it does a launch it does loads of giveaways so effectively at the very beginning there there's no organic sales they're all discounted um some of the people are saying that there's almost like a, a scoring against accounts with accounts that are been overusing promo codes what have your experience with that if any um you know it's funny uh... Uh, a few of my friends, they, they were doing tests uh, and they were launching identical products, absolutely identical products under different brand names with different launch tactics. And uh, the results that they, uh, they discovered were uh, that it's absolutely all over the place. <laughs> the same account may have, uh, after giving a 90% off codes, uh, one day blast, for example, and you're all of a sudden ranking on place, place one. You do exactly the same strategy on exactly the same product under a different brand name, and you are nowhere to be found. Uh, then you do rebates, then you do uh, many chat launches, for example, and it's really all over the place. Uh, the only explanation I can uh, find for that is, uh, well, we don't know much about Amazon, and you may have fallen into a different uh, algorithm for your product than the algorithm for, for the product that didn't succeed, for example. And also, uh, you may have been fallen victim to some um, buyer groups 
maybe you're doing a launch on uh, ManyChat and you're giving 90% of codes through uh, ManyChat and somebody shared your product and all of a sudden this group of buyers come from some group and buys out your product and their vote is equal zero and you're not succeeding, right? So uh, it's, it's not a guess actually, it's true uh, that Amazon uh, treats buyers differently and a lot of buyers are given vote power zero. So uh, when you launch your products, it's really hit and miss. Uh, unless uh, you have a, uh, some sort of filtration system, some sort of algorithms to filter out the bad buyers. And is that something that you've been able, as a programmer, is it something you've been able to do on some of your launches to make your launches a bit more easier uh, and fluid to launch? Yes. Um, well, I own Zone Jump, right? I see a lot of activity there. Yeah. And uh, what we've been doing a lot is uh, banning people. <laughs> yeah. We are we are filtering, we are blacklisting them for. I cannot give you exact details because I don't want other launch services to do the same. Yeah. Uh, but basically, we analyze the buyer activity, and that's why we require people to MWS Connect to see. Um, uh, the order ID and to see the buyer activity from based on the previous uh, purchases, right? And uh, we analyze that and uh, some buyers, they just get kicked out of the system right away uh, based on their IPs, based on something else. And some, some get kicked out later on. And uh, we've seen huge difference in success yeah. after we started implementing the filters. Makes sense. Um, for those who have not used on Jump, do you want to go give it, give us a little bit of background on it? Uh, well, Zon Jump is a launch service, just like uh, any other launch service out there, like Viral Launch or Six Leaf or which others do I know? Uh, last launch by Seller Tools. Uh, we do uh, similar type of things uh, with only exception uh, that we heavily rely on uh, Facebook. We bring a lot of customers from Facebook and uh, we push them into our chat sequence and we filter them out. Uh, we, we have a huge database from different assets of uh, bad buyers and we, we kick them out based on their activity. Uh, it's, it's, it's a well-known fact that uh, a lot of the launches uh, fail uh, because basically they get bought out by one person mm -hmm. who has a lot of these so-called sock puppet accounts uh, by one or by two. Uh, those are fake accounts and they try to uh, wipe out your inventory uh, based on those accounts and then resell your product maybe if you're lucky on eBay, if you're unlucky on your own listing. Uh, so, so, we paid so effectively, just to break in there, sorry, yeah. with all these bad actors on the platform with these multitude of accounts, so say for instance you are doing, you're doing these giveaways but you think that everything that you're doing on your end is pretty clean, you know, as an as a Amazon seller or a brand, etc. But obviously no one can really control the bad actors unless you start to use filters like you have. So in some cases... Are, are, are launches maybe getting penalized without anyone realizing other than what you've realized now is that you're filtering bad actors out of the system. So in some cases, people are looking for where their launches have gone wrong but can't fathom what's going on. And it's, it's simply down to that no one, you know, it's very difficult to be aware of that some of the people that are doing it, taking your discount codes are using dummy accounts and buying them in small increments. Yeah. That's, I haven't thought about it in that, in that light because I've got a lot of people come to me and say my, my launch has failed and this, that and the other. And there are a lot of moving parts when you're doing a launch. I always say to someone, you're not going to become a gourmet chef just because someone gave you the same ingredients. It's, it takes practice. It takes time. You do lots of launches. You start to see those activities. You become fluid with it. You understand where the, point, the, the pain points are. A lot of people that do a launch for a first time don't don't always, you know, get, get it off to the park and, and they think that, all oh, right, this whole ranking thing, you know, storefront URL or searching by whatever you may do um, doesn't work. When in fact it does, but with something like what you've just said there, it's very difficult, even as, as someone who's seasoned at launching, it's very difficult to control who picks up the codes and yeah. who the codes are bought from and which accounts that they're bought off. 
Yeah. Well, uh, um, there are several uh, things to, to consider. Uh, it's not just you and Amazon. Yeah. Uh, so there are three players, you, uh, customers, and Amazon. And you want your product to go to good customers, to real customers. There is a whole industry developed to swipe out those codes to get uh, free products, right? Yeah. And those are bad customers, and yeah. uh, Amazon penalizes them. Yeah. I'm not just making it up. It's, it's a fact. Uh, Amazon, uh, well, first of all, if the buyer did not spend uh, at least 50 bucks, right, his vote is zero. Actually, it, it, it is a negative vote. Uh, if you get a lot of sales to very new accounts, uh, you're going to rank worse than before. Uh, se secondly, uh, if buyer, uh, if you look at his account and uh, more than 50% of his uh, purchases are discounted purchases, there's something wrong with that. Also, if the buyer buys only, uh, let's use uh, outlier products or bad products, recently launched products. It's also unnatural, right? Mm -hmm. So the buyer has to buy at least a few best sellers before he qualifies to be a buyer. Yeah. So all of that have to be taken into consideration on the buyer side. Yeah. Uh, that's why some launches, oh, I, I give out 500 items at 90% off, I have zero effect. I give out 500 uh, items and 90% off, I rank number one. Yeah. Identical product, just something happened in between, right? Yeah. So uh, what would I recommend to new uh, sellers is uh, really to, to research first. If you can uh, give lower discount during your launch, it's better mm -hmm. uh, because it would keep away a lot of these people who want free product, like do 70% off. It's going to keep a lot of people out. Do 50% off. It's going to keep a lot of, but it's going to be more expensive. If yeah. you launch it on uh, Facebook, uh, and uh, now the most uh, most popular way to launch is you 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 launch your Facebook ad through the messenger to your many chat. Get good people into that many chat sequence. With ninety yeah. percent off, you can get conversions of like three cents. Uh, I've seen people doing it literally for free. Yeah. Right. But do you want those people? No. If it is real people, if your audience somehow did not get uh, tainted, it's good. Mm -hmm. But if you get shared into those groups, those evil groups of buyers, 90% of buyers, then, then you're in trouble. Yeah. So. No, that makes yeah, that's sense. That's how it is. Um, I know it's a lot recently of stuff going on, you know, obviously it's in the rumor mill as well, but it seems to be a lot of data leaks from Amazon in terms of algorithm information and stuff like that, um, which is getting into various different hands, etc. Um, do you know anything about what's going on there? Has you heard any on any, any of that kind of rumors that would help people in terms of improving their their flow for ranking? Yeah, well, if you've ever been to any uh, Chinese uh, seller events, they openly talk about black hat tactics. Yes. That's their main method of launching, even huge brands. And they openly discuss what Amazon knows. Here is the documents from Amazon. There's a lot of corrupt uh, mm -hmm. Amazon employees apparently in China. And this, this is not me. It's, it's a public knowledge. There was an article from Wall Street Journal about it. Yeah. And Amazon is doing some things uh, about it. Uh, they fired a lot of employees, as far as I know, and uh, they're trying to, uh, to stop it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and according to those documents that leaked out, uh, a lot of information came out, including what I just mentioned about how they treat buyers and that not everything is so black and white and straightforward. Yeah. So. Well, and there's things like ASIN reports and stuff like that, apparently. You know, there's like documents where, you know, people are, you know, buying documents where they're, they're you know, a bit like a reverse ASIN lookup, but this is actual real data, apparently. Um, of a, you know a fella uh, competitor on Amazon, so they're looking at their keywords, they're looking at their session data, uh, conversion data. So they've got a full scope of information, so they can extrapolate that and apply that to their own um, their own uh, campaigns for ranking. So it gets them ahead of the game. But like you said, you know, with the leaks and stuff, Amazon's going to obviously take that quite serious. And I think once they catch up with 
some people, they then lead, it leads to the next thing, you know, it's like, who else do you know is doing this? You know, maybe they're offered to recover, you know, like give their account back if they give them a bit of information, you know, to get access to other people, etc. But um, yeah, it seems like there's a lot of stuff going on at the moment. And there seems to be a lot more articles coming out at the moment about black hat techniques. And yeah, stuff, you know? yeah. Um, I would stay away from any of that. Yes, yeah, anyway. of course. Exactly. Yeah. And, and of course, as a software company, you want to be kept well away from that as well, because in a day you've got user base. Um, yeah. So you have to keep very neutral with stuff like that. What, um, what's your take on, on the situation with reviews at the moment? What have you seen? You know, a lot of people talk about this threshold of 5% uh, percentage in terms and then after that people can't leave reviews. What, what kind of things are you seeing there? Uh, well, it goes from five to twelve, actually. So it depends. Again, we don't know exact number. Yeah. And uh, if but, but give me your is, give me your rationale. You just said five to twelve. I haven't heard the people mention twelve before. So, how are you seeing the five to twelve from like your experience? I think it depends on the product, and uh, Amazon adjusts uh, based on the uh, category on your category node. Just some products get more reviews naturally than others. And uh, I think they check for abnormal behavior. It's, uh, it's not natural to receive too many reviews, right, for mm -hmm. certain products. And it's more natural for others. But definitely they, uh, they trim it down and they, uh, uh, you know, they put review ban on some products that, that just get too many reviews. And again, those black hat people somehow contact uh, Amazon employees and remove those bans. That's what I heard. Yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, but the, the number here is five to 12 and uh, try to stay away from obvious uh, Amazon uh, terms of service violations when asking for reviews. Yeah. So don't get too many reviews. Yeah. Um, have you seen much in the way of there's a, there's a lot of uh, issues at the moment where people having their listings changed. We've done shows on it before. We've called content jacking where people are changing the bullet points, the, the title, the um, the brand name, the images and stuff like that. And a lot of it seems to be people are doing this through vendor central accounts. So people yeah. buying up these burner accounts and, and doing that. Well, have, you, have you heard anything and seen anything? Yeah, it's uh, probably one of the most common uh, tactics for uh, Chinese sellers is to uh, get an old ASIN, uh, change something about it in vendor central, merge asins and voila you have thousand reviews right yeah so they search for those uh as dating expired asins or abandoned asins and uh through vendor central uh they through customer support actually they ask for a merger and uh, amazon for some reason merges those asins and uh yeah and that's that's how they do it and sometimes they uh, do it uh, against their competition so they they change something through vendor central and it's yeah. very difficult to to change it right to change it back unless you you are brand gated and unless you have a brand registry tool it's literally impossible yeah. so if you have your brand protection it is still difficult but you can uh, change it back and there are people who charge for this service so <laughs> It's, yeah. it's like a whole new world there. Yeah. yeah. Now, I've heard, I've heard there's, um, you know, that people, they, they were, first there were the black hat services, and now there's anti-black hat services that are being peddled around now. So, uh, and so yeah. people. <laughs> it seems to be quite interesting out there. Um, what else have you got planned in terms of, like, the new year? Where, where do you see things going with, like, the algorithm at the moment? Are you seeing it becoming more sophisticated and... Yeah, well, you should realize that uh, a lot of Amazon engineers come from Google and they see uh, how Amazon turns more and more into Google, basically. Uh, it was very easy to uh, figure out algorithm of Google like 10 years ago and rank anything easily. And Google slowly, slowly patched all those holes and uh, it's only big brands now that are able to rank same thing here uh i see that uh large accounts big brands direct relationships with amazon direct deals with amazons they have a, a preference they have privileges that uh, new sellers don't have uh, if you didn't know that if, you, if your account is more than one year old 
it's easier to rank. It's uh, everything is easier. If your account is uh, on Amazon exclusives, it's even easier. And uh, if you're a multi-million dollar seller, you have uh, connections with Amazon, things become much, much easier over time. So uh, if you're launching a product uh, for short term, if you're just trying to make quick money, uh, uh, this opportunity getting smaller and smaller, unless you're in a very marginal field. So if you're entering an Amazon game, uh, you should come with a strong brand, with strong product, something that you can control. Uh, and then over time, grow it and don't worry if you have problems in the beginning. Uh, now it becomes like, like Google, a very long-term plan, yeah. not a short-term plan. Yeah, I've noticed that. I mean, when, um, when, they started, when I started selling on Amazon in 2015, I just looked at sponsored ads and I'm like, that's just like the, the toy town version of Google AdWords. You know how... Um, how in depth Google AdWords is, you, you probably get uh, your pilot's license a lot quicker. I think you'd, you at least need to um, invest 80 hours into Google AdWords. It's so sophisticated in terms of obviously this display advertising, remarketing, and everything else, but even on the paid search side. Um, but yeah, it, it, the algorithm is obviously on the PPC engine is developing a lot more on Amazon, but it's still very limited. You think there's only a handful of features that you get to work with. And then a lot of your strategies are based around the, um, the, the incomplexities of the algorithm and the mistakes that it makes itself that you find little holes of where you can get ahead with some of the, the tactics that you use for PPC. Um, are you seeing any shifts in PPC as well? Because one of the key shifts I see uh, this year, if we look at like on a macro level, on the PPC end of thing, it's all becoming more about relevance, less keywords, less impression share. You know, it's very, 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 very focused. And in some cases, we've seen across, because we, we've got our own agency, we've seen it where if you've got a brand new product in a brand new category, or, and even worse, a new account, you literally, on the main keywords, you won't get any impressions. You literally had to do giveaways, get a couple of sales through the giveaways in order to start driving impressions on the main keyword. Have you seen anything yeah. like that yourself? Yeah, yeah. it's one of the tactics. Uh, you, you drive traffic to your PPC <laughs> to get sales, and then you get, uh, you get some level of trust from uh, Amazon, yeah. like a, your quality score, let's put it this yeah. way. And then after a while, you can slowly increase. Don't, don't dump 100 bucks uh, right away for a new product a day start slow, start getting conversions on your PPC, right? And then go slowly, slowly, slowly up. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not big on PPC, but I know people uh, who are very experienced with PPC, they can launch any product just by using PPC. And it's, it's a whole big world out there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I do that. I use exact match keywords to launch with, keyword, uh, um, launch with PPC. But you have to... You have to make sure that when you do look to these products, if, you, if it's something doing 250, 300 units a day, forget it to do it on PPC. But if you're doing anywhere between 20 to 50 units a day, it's a lot more easier to achieve, especially on the longer tail. And it depends on the marketplaces as well. So there's certain strategies work for certain things. But what interested me just there, what you were saying, you mentioned a quality score. So are you in the mindset that, Obviously, we don't see it there, but there is a quality score associated with an account, a campaign, and an ad group at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 uh, obvious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that, just... That's why that's why some people rank like this on PPC. You you get right away results, and some people take it a long time. It's based on account level, uh, on uh, campaign level. Don't yeah. kill off old campaigns, right? Keep yeah. them. Mm -hmm. uh, and also even on Asian level. So yeah, all, all of those things. It's like some, some people have uh, PPC results literally grandfathered to them. Yeah. So they own that word because Amazon, okay, this guy sells well, converts well, we're going to give it to him. Yeah. So I know people who just literally own keywords and they never move because they've been selling for so long and so much just based off PPC. So Makes sense. So where, where would you say things are going next year on a technical level? You know, with regards to what, what do you think you're going to see where people are going to 
the whole thing with giveaways obviously the it's kind of the path is narrowed a bit you've got the naysayers who say it doesn't work and then you've got the companies go well yes it does work we make it work every time but where do you see the whole giveaway um process going do you think it will start to phase out over a period of time or do you think it's going to come become more sophisticated I don't think it will phase out. Uh, yeah. People have been talking about it for the last three or four years. Yeah. Uh, I think Amazon makes a lot of money out of it and they love the idea that uh, we pay for the products that they sell, right? Yeah. So uh, literally the buyers are winning with these giveaways, right? And Amazon is winning. The only ones who are losing is uh, sellers. But sellers also win if they get to rank. Yeah. Uh, Definitely ranking fast is more difficult right now and it's not straightforward. Uh, I would mix different ranking methods. I would do some giveaway, I would do some rebates, I would do some, uh, just try to sell through uh, Google AdWords and through uh, like many chat sequences through Facebook ads with a lower discount. And uh, and just hold and just wait. Don't yeah. don't uh, don't expect quick results. And yeah. launch many products. Uh, you know, like everybody bets on one product, uh, and that product may for some reason just never pick pick up. I know big sellers. They don't bet on one on one item. They just launch and launch. Oh, this is a winner. So they put more attention to that product. These are losers. Forget about it. Yeah. So they launch and they launch. And big sellers are getting bigger. Uh, small sellers sometimes get discouraged and they walk away. Oh, it doesn't work, right? So, and also try to establish more and more relationships with Amazon. Uh, each account is different. Your relationships with Amazon are very important. And I see big sellers, they don't sweat it at all. They, they have everything figured out already. Yeah. So they have direct relationships. Their account is in pristine condition. They have uh, all sorts of gatings for them. And uh, after that, it becomes much, much easier. Yeah, makes total sense. Cool. Well, look, it'd be good to get you on again. I think we covered quite a lot of ground there. Um, what's the best way if people want to reach out to you, use your services, etc.? Do you want to give us a bit of a rundown, email address, website addresses? Uh, well, uh, if it's business-related inquiry, uh, it's uh, biz, B-I-Z, or B-I-Z, at uh, zonepages.com. Uh, if somebody wants to be my friend, you can find me on Facebook. I'm almost always accepting Amazon sellers. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, if you're a big seller, I strongly recommend that you join uh, MDS group. Uh, you have to sell more than a million dollars a year. And it's, uh, for us, it's the biggest uh, resource and we have events and stuff like that. And uh, uh, for softwares, just find out, uh, for Google them. Uh, yesterday I released a search find by uh, link function in Pixel Find Me. I don't know if you've seen it. And uh, it's a highly desirable feature in combination with the uh, ManyChat uh, launch. You use search find by link where it explains exactly how to search find by your product. And it, it looks like a very good option for organic search. And uh, instead of using those weird URLs. Yeah. Uh, so it's Pixel Fi Me uh, is the service. And uh, in any of those softwares, you can just use contact, uh, contact me contact us uh, function and just say, if you have a question to me, just say, oh, this is a question for Leo. And usually my support people, they just forward it to me. But Excellent. don't ask obvious questions. I'm very busy. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. worries. Guys, thanks for joining us. Leo, thanks for joining us. We'll get you back again. If this is your first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you again in the next few days. Take care.